dude, just come on. God bless one, that hero. <laughs> just one thing. Remember that time you needed some <laughs> fucking you need quarters for the yeah, vending machine? Yeah. Just, just write it in. 18 pages, dude. Yeah, just it. 18 pages. Give me my shit. Yeah. Fucking aliens, dude. They <laughs> exist. What's going on, everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things. And today I'm going to be giving you guys a breakdown of my entire podcast setup. This is a pretty simple setup for everything that I have included here, but it is also very professional at the same time. Everything for recording the audio is fitting into this case right here, a complete, almost studio setup in this tiny little seahorse case. And then I also have this bag right here for everything that I use to capture the video element of this podcast. If you want to see some final results, I will leave a link for the podcast channel up there in the corner. You can find it in a bunch of different places if you like listening to podcasts. And I'll also roll in some sample footage at the end of this because I'm about to set up right here and record one. So in no particular order, we're just going to jump right into the audio side of the setup. I'll show you my video after that. And if you're curious about anything that we're talking about here, I'm not going to be doing a dedicated review on every individual piece. However, I will leave some links for pricing and a bunch of different other specs and whatever you may need in the description down below. So let's get into my audio case right here. This is a seahorse case, has wheels on it, little handle so you can roll it around. It's super nice for traveling and everything that I have in here, including the mic stands, gets pretty heavy. So it's nice to have everything nice and protected in here. We've got some expensive microphones and some expensive equipment in general. This thing is waterproof, crush proof, dust proof, all of that stuff. So I feel pretty safe with leaving all of my equipment in here. Now this is actually designed as a photography case because I have an insert in here where you can put camera bodies, lenses, and whatever you may need. This fits all of my podcasting equipment almost perfectly. We got mesh nets up top here and let's just start pulling everything out and setting it up so you guys can get an idea of how easy this actually is. Let's start with the mic stands. Like I mentioned, these are some of the heaviest things out there. Just picked them up at Guitar Center. They were probably like 30 bucks. I got two microphones in this setup, but you could carry more if you so choose. I keep the bases in the front there on the bottom because when I'm rolling this thing around, I don't want them moving around and crushing anything. And then I have both of the mic stands. So these just thread into the base, just like this right here, and then I've got a little clip on there to hold the XLR cable. Now for the microphone, I've got two of the super popular Shure SM7Bs. Great audio, and this is sort of overkill for most people, but if you want some of the best sounding professional equipment, it's a really, really good microphone. So these screw on to the mic stands, and there you go. I've also done some podcasts where we're just holding the microphones out like this just depends on what you want to do. If you want to travel lighter than this case, you totally could. So two of those microphones ready to go. Next up, I've got a little Manfrotto tripod. These things are obviously for cameras, but it works great for how I actually record audio from the podcast, the Zoom H6. So this is an audio recorder that is super versatile. There's a few different tracks on it, four to be exact, also with a room mic up top. You can swap this out for a shotgun microphone if you wanted to do that in the future. Again, I'm not gonna be reviewing this, but there is a ton of functionality on here. You can do multi-tracks, you can combine tracks, you can play, pause, record, fast forward, rewind, and do everything like sort of an old school recorder. But what's cool about it is that it does accept XLR cables, which is good for a microphone like this, but also quarter inch adapters, which is great for when you have something like this right here, another piece which we'll get into in a second. So I put my Zoom H6 recorder on there and just gives it a nice stable platform because I'm gonna be plugging a bunch of wires into this. XLR cables, I got some pretty short ones here because I'm typically just setting all this stuff up on top of a desk like you see in front of me. I'll plug microphone one into track one and I like to plug microphone two into the third track because it just makes it even on each side. Now back to this cable right here, what is this good for? It's a quarter inch jack and this actually also plugs in right to the center of the XLR port there. I'm actually using this type of connection going into a MacBook Pro if I'm recording someone else's audio who is not with me. Whether someone is calling in on Zoom or Skype, you can actually pull the audio directly from pretty much any device depending on which connection you have here. 
goes right into the recorder on its own track. You can set its levels, change compression, do whatever you need to on that exact track, and it keeps things isolated. What's cool about this setup too is that I'm recording both of these at the same time on individual tracks, so if my guest is a lot quieter than I am, then I can turn up their volume, or if they're a lot louder than I am, I can turn down their volume. There's also a filter on here which is super handy when recording through something like a phone or a computer, so I typically use track number four to record through the computer with that filter turned on. Next up in these mesh pockets, we got two more cables. One of them is a simple USB connector. I also have an anchor battery right here. The Zoom H6 actually runs on, I believe, three or four AAA batteries. However, I have had it die on me one time because I just wasn't paying attention. So I like to simply plug it into a battery bank like this right here. I just leave that sit right underneath the recorder. And when I turn that on, this thing is set up, ready to record, and it is pretty much never going to run out of battery. This thing is not very power hungry. I believe you could film for about three hours or so, so you could record roughly three hour long podcast on here with just the regular batteries. I also have a headphone splitter right here because I like to monitor the audio and allow the guests to do the same, so I plug that into the headphone port. Here I have Shure SRH440s. It's just what I happened to come across at Guitar Center where I actually picked these up, but you can get them online, I believe on Amazon as well. Again, links for that stuff in the description down below. They have coiled cables like this right here. Get them plugged in, twist it to lock it, and then plug the headphone right into the splitter. Same thing on the second one, and... That's it. <laughs> this entire setup is ready to go, super high quality audio, and if I wasn't just kind of standing here explaining all of this to you guys, I could have this done in about five minutes. All I have to do now is monitor the audio, check the levels, hit record, and I'm good to go for as long as you want to be podcasting for. Now that I got all of this set up, let me get this case out of the way and give you a quick rundown of my video setup. So now that you got your professional audio set up and running, we're moving on to the camera portion. This is more of a personal preference. This is something that I would recommend to anyone out there who's looking to record nice audio. Maybe you're starting a podcast. The video element can vary a lot, so depending on what type of cameras you like to shoot on and depending on how long you want to record for, maybe you don't need to be recording for an hour. There's a million different options. I'm just gonna give you guys a quick rundown of my exact setup. So for the base of everything, I shoot all of my videos, including this one right now, on an EOS R. Currently shooting on a 15 to 35. I typically do all of my podcasts on the same body. Canon EOS R with their 24 to 70. I have this thing fit up in a small rig right now, which I also got on Amazon with a few different accessories, an extra cold shoe mount on this side, an extended cold shoe mount over here, and then the actual cage comes with a cold shoe mount right in the front here. They also give you this little tool that magnetically snaps into the base there, so really cool stuff coming from small rig. Now, like all of my videos, I'm typically recording on a Rode Video Micro. I typically put this thing on the little extension out the side here, run this across the back of the camera, and plug it in to the mic port. Now, the Canon EOS R is not capable of recording for longer than 30 minutes straight. I like to keep things really simple and keep everything in one clip, keep all of my audio in individual clips for the tracks, and then just sort of mesh them together. Editing an hour-long podcast honestly doesn't take me very long. I drop in an intro, drop in an outro. Typically, I don't really edit anything in between. It's unfiltered. So it takes me maybe roughly 15 minutes, but the export and everything else, that's what takes a little bit longer. So in order to record longer than just 30 minutes with the Canon EOS R, right here I have an Atomos Ninja V. I currently have one of their Atomos X 500 gigabyte SSD in the back here. And then these things take big old batteries like this right here. And then I like to mount this thing up to the secondary cold shoe on the side here. I do like to route the microphone cable behind that if possible. And then I also have a mini HDMI, regular HDMI to mini. And I'm going to be inputting the signal from the camera. So when using something like this, you are going to have to dig into your camera settings a little bit. I have my camera set up to never go to sleep, so I just turn it on. 
and then I turn on the Atomos, start recording from the Atomos, and the camera may look like it's going to sleep, but as long as the image is still projecting up to the Atomos screen, then you should be fine. It did take a little bit of fine tuning to get that stuff dialed in, but it is working great right now. And then the only other thing that I use occasionally would be this little guy right here, just sort of a friction arm. I'll put this into the side cold shoe, tighten that up. I know this is looking a little bit ridiculous. You could just use a camcorder or a cell phone if you really wanted to, but I already had a lot of this gear, which is why I'm choosing to use this stuff. So here I have a little newer light, throw a battery onto there. Let's actually get the camera on. I'll typically have the screen out so I can monitor what is going on and what all of my settings are. Turn the Atomos on. We are now outputting the signal from the camera directly into this, which means I can simply tap record on here and start recording. And then audio is on, light is on. That right there is the entire podcast video setup. Kind of insane and crazy looking and overkill, but I'll mount this thing up to a larger Manfrotto tripod, actually the one that this camera is sitting on right now. And that is how I capture all of that. So you got the audio element, the video element. Again, I'm recording one super long video for a podcast through the Ninja V. I drop that file into Final Cut Pro, which is my editing program of choice. I take both individual tracks that I'm recording, whether I have a guest with me in person or if I'm recording it, over the internet, line everything up with the clip because the audio is actually being saved to this clip as well. So we have redundancy here. Line everything up, chop it up at the beginning and the end, throw on an intro and outro, and that's pretty much it. So let me give you guys just a quick little preview of what this setup actually looks like in its completed form. June 1st, today, was the deadline that Trump put on basically the government Pentagon for UFO while he was yeah. still in the office to yeah. release known information about UFOs. I haven't heard anything today. No, I, I haven't heard anything today. I, I did read some stuff uh, yesterday. I don't know if they released it today or not. I don't think the Pentagon takes, uh, takes timelines too seriously with stuff like that. Yeah. Especially that they, they're like, they f and scribble it on a napkin and throw it outside. Like, Oh, yep. We told everyone that's it. <laughs> and that was like roped up into some other f Thing it was the was entire going, like, the COVID stimulus. Bill. Yeah, yeah, no, it was, it was the entire. Yeah, it was the entire COVID bill. That was the only good God thing. God bless came whoever out of like <laughs> was like and hey, aliens, bro. Yeah, throw, throw, <laughs> yeah. Oh, throw aliens in that shit too. Sixteen dude. page or eighteen pages of alien stuff, <laughs> yeah. please. Yeah, and it, five out. thousand page. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, dude, just come on. God bless one, that hero. <laughs> just one thing. Remember that time you needed some fucking you need quarters for the vending yeah. machine? Yeah. Just, just write it in. eighteen pages, dude. Yeah, just it. eighteen pages. Give me my shit. Yeah. Aliens, dude, they exist. So that's all that I have for today. Hopefully this helps some of you out there who are looking to start a podcast. If you guys have any questions on anything that you saw here, let me know in the comments down below and I'll try to answer them as best as possible. I've been recording with this exact setup for a few weeks now and I'm really digging it. Super compact, easy to bring places and very easy to set up. I can get the audio and video element set up in roughly five to 10 minutes, record and be done in an hour, pack it all back up in the same amount of time. And yeah, I really like it. So again, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. If you are new to the channel, consider clicking subscribe because I make new videos every week. It's gonna be all for today. Thank you guys for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one.